Hi, yeah, it's Rachel here. I'm just going to speak a little bit and test that the captionings are working. So if I just speak now. Okay. Hello. <laughs> and we'll see. They might not. I think they should be working now. Okay, I think, hi, Sabrina, we're just te testing the captioning. Yeah, perfect. Can speak now, can you hear me okay? Yes, absolutely. Can you hear me well as well? Rachel? Yeah, I can hear you, sorry. <laughs> I think we have Tim connected as well. Yep. Yep, and then we have Mr. Rangelov, Stanislav. Can you hear us well? Yes. yes, hello, I'm here. Hello, great, good to see you. So we we'll wait for uh, the other speakers to join the panel and um, uh, then we'll start. We will, uh, you will be let in, uh, let's say in the webinar uh, before the participants and then all the participants will be allowed to, to access the webinar. Okay, sure. So Geraldine is still trying to connect with audio, by audio. Hello, everybody. I can't hear you. Uh, hello. Good morning. Uh, um... Hello, Gosha. Good morning. My name is Małgosia Donska Orszko from Poland, from Warsaw. Good morning. I apologize in advance if I will not be able to pronounce your name correctly, <laughs> but... No, no, you can say Margaret Donska and it's okay. Olszko. <laughs> Olszko. Olszko is nice. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, Irene. Hello, how are you? All good. I see that your audio is working quite well as well. Hi. Perfect. Geraldine, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Perfect, thank you. And I'll start my video, see if it's okay. I guarantee you very well. <laughs> Still have a few minutes. Um, Rachel, if uh, there are any issues, could you please write me on Teams? Yeah, uh, sure. because my phone otherwise uh, interacts with the Jabra and uh, mm -hmm. creates confusion. <laughs> so I will switch it off. <laughs> Hello, Vlado. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Egbert Holthuis from the European Commission. Hello, Egbert Holthuis. Yes. Hi. How are you? So I, I called in. I called in uh, through uh, the telephone eh, because I always have problems with Zoom applications. Yeah, we know that uh, Zoom is not very user friendly for um, the persons working in the European institutions. Um, so, in terms of the agenda, you will um, follow the um, documentation. So, 1010, uh, you will have the, the, the service providers, uh, the individual ones, you give uh, the word, and then uh, the country desks will react, isn't it? Uh, yes. Well, actually, I will uh, ask service providers to intervene, and for those for which there is a country desk representative in the European Commission, I will ask them to immediately give a reply or a feedback. Um, in the case of, uh, sorry, someone has the microphone on. In the case of Croatia, unfortunately, the country representative could not join. So I will briefly refer to the key messages, and uh, then maybe you can uh, intervene, uh, Egbert. Yeah. Is that okay for you? Yes. Yeah. Bye bye. Great. Okay. I saw that Reka also connected. Uh, yeah, there she is. Mirela is there from Albania. We are still missing, I think, the representative from Bulgaria and from Finland. Hello. Hi, Kirsi. Hello, Sabrina. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. How are you doing? All good. I see you're back in the office. Yes, we are back in the office. And you, you are still at home or uh, are you in the office? We are working in the office on rotation, so in shifts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sanna is here also. <laughs> Hello, good morning, and, everybody. Hello, Luke. Hello, Luke. Uh, Sabrina, did you receive uh, the two slides I sent you a couple yeah. of minutes ago? I received them. Uh, would you like to project them, Kirsi, yourself? Sorry? Would you like to project to, to, to show the slides yourself, to sharing uh, the screen? If you can do it, it would be perfect. But I can do it also if it's, yeah. 
Uh, it would be better if you could do it, Kirsi, because in that case, uh, then you can uh, move yourself the, the slides when... Uh... Yeah, there is only two slides, so... <laughs> well, <laughs> I have it in case it's needed. So I just received an email from uh, the representative from the European Commission, uh, Katia Berti, and she mentioned that her colleague will join instead of her. So uh, okay. that's Philip, a team leader on the semester. Uh, I don't see him yet. Okay. How many participants there will be? We have around 180 participants. So uh, we'll see how many will join, but uh, it, the interest for the topic is quite high, I would say. That's good. Okay, uh, everybody's uh, mic was uh, tested. Uh. Sabrina, hello. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Uh, someone is sharing the screen at the moment. Is it me? Uh, I just yes. wanted to check that it's working. So I'm closing. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Rachel, was everybody's microphone checked and tested? Not yet. Not yet. Not today. We did it yesterday in the, um, in the practice session. Mm -hmm. So, Vlado from Slovakia, do you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Okay. okay. Perfect. Morning, I'm Rika from your child. Gerardin, can we check your microphone, please? Yes, it works, I think. Perfect. Thank you. Tim, yeah. your microphone is tested? I think so, yes. Yeah. Rika? Yes, good morning. A bit weak. Okay, better? Yeah, much better. Okay. Much better, better yes. Uh, Agapi? Hi, Luke, how are you? Very well, thank you. <laughs> Works. Kirsi uh, took the floor already, so no problem. Then we have uh, our colleague from Hungary. I colleague from Hungary. There is no colleague from Hungary. Uh, there is a colleague from uh, Bulgaria. From the ah, Bulgaria. okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no problem. I see that the country representative from uh, Poland, um, Mrs. Donska, was trying to share her screen. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, I wanted to see how it works, but now I know. Thank you. Perfect. If, if I can give a suggestion, uh, there is a lot of background light and therefore we can't see your face. So mm -hmm. okay. if you could if reposition yourself, then we would have a better view on, on you. Okay. Much better, much better. I will change the, the side to be in the front of the light. Very good, very good. So, Thomas Mirella, can we check your microphone? Hello, it's me. Visible right now. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Mirella, yours? Can't hear you. Hello? Very weak. Okay, I will change it. No, I just... Too weak. Irena? Hello. Loud and clear. Good. Stanislav, uh, can we check your microphone? Yes, hello to all. I'm here. Thank Bye. you. And then Thomas. Hi, Luke. Hi, everyone. Perfect. Good. Rachel, you will give a signal when we officially start? Yeah, so we have two minutes and then I can go live. I have a slide that I can share with some information for the participants, telling them that they're muted and their video is not turned on. They can speak in the, in the chat and they can ask questions via the Q&A. Okay. So we wait uh, two minutes, uh, Rachel, before officially starting so that people can come in the room. Yeah, so I will, um, I will share the PowerPoint slides um, and then when you start speaking, I will take that down so that people can see your, your face. But I give people a few minutes, huh? Or are people in the room already now? Uh, I can't see until I go live. Okay. Okay, then we wait until 10, 2 or 10, 3, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will, yeah. I'll tell you in one moment when we go live. 
Good. Um, We are still missing a couple of uh, speakers from the country desks of the European Commission from Poland and Slovakia and from Greece. Can you give me their names, please? And I'll be sending them the link. I will send them to you via uh, email, Rachel. If you just do it after the introduction, because I will go live now and I will share my screen. So they'll, I will shut down my emails while I'm sharing my screen. Uh, Rachel, do you hear me now? Yes, yeah, that's great. Thank Much you very better. Thank you. Okay, so I'm now going to go live. That means the participants will be joining the webinar, so they'll be able to hear you, they'll be able to see you. Um, and then Luke, if you start a sort of three minutes pass, and then I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. Perfect. So going live now. We start in uh, about one to two minutes. So please make, make it yourself comfortable. We start officially in two minutes from now. For those that are already with us already, uh, please, uh, if you have comments, use the chat box and the Q&A button on the control bar. And if you want to have subtitles in English, you can activate these by clicking on the close captioning button, also on the control bar. We'll record this webinar and make it available afterwards. We officially start in one minute. Welcome to those that already joined us. If you have comments, you can use the chat box. For questions, you can use the Q&A button on the control bar. If you want to activate subtitles, you can do this by clicking on the closed captioning button also on the control bar. And be aware that we uh, record this webinar and that it is uh, available, will be made available afterwards. Your microphone will be muted to ensure the quality of the session. So, good morning, dear participants. Welcome at this uh, webinar that will focus on early childhood intervention in Europe and how we can bring important elements of this uh, reflection to the European semester process. You are with many, we are close to 200 participants and that is, that is great. And indeed, it would have been much nicer to be able to work face to face uh, and to see each other in a different way. But as we all know, during COVID-19, uh, this is uh, not possible. Still, we have top class speakers and we have very good people uh, involved in the event today. So let's enjoy, let's learn from each other and let's exchange. I have to apologize for this uh, webinar. The head of the disability unit, uh, Madame Emmanuel Grange, uh, 
she really would have uh, loved to be with us, but due to uh, commission meetings, she is unable to uh, be with us uh, today. But we had in the preparation of this event many conversations with her and with her team. So their thoughts are included in uh, how we will uh, organize and uh, have the discussions here. Why this event? Since many years, ESPD works on the European semester. Now, what is the European semester? The European semester is an instrument to streamline national policies, reform policies, and the European Union policy agenda. It is a circle of analysis, uh, recommendations, and reforms to facilitate uh, and to support further development of our societies. And in the past, ESPD focused already on employment of persons with disabilities, persons with support needs. We already focused on education. We focused on investment needs in the social services sector. Today, we want to focus on children, children with support needs and with disabilities. We focus today on early childhood intervention, or as it also is called, early childhood development or early childhood education and care. ECI, early childhood intervention, is a very powerful tool for inclusion of children with disabilities, with support needs, and to prevent their segregation. It is the most effective instrument when working on deinstitutionalization. And as we all know, during COVID-19, families and children with support needs were uh, more affected than other families uh, in society. So it is important that we focus on uh, these families and children. Last but not least, also at European Union level, there are many initiatives focusing on children now. So during this uh, webinar, we want to explore how um, important recommendations can be included in the European semester process to make sure that the child guarantee, which is discussed at European level now, can also become a reality in real life and that the needed reforms at member state level can uh, be organized and, organized and structured. For those that are less familiar with the concept of early childhood intervention, well, it is a set of services, support measures for children and families. And uh, the key element there is that these, uh, this support should be started uh, as early as possible in the life of uh, the children. As soon as the special support need is uh, detected, the machinery should start and it should support the children and uh, the families, the parents. It is a folk, there is a very strong focus on the child, but also on uh, the parents and the wider family. It is empowering families and family carers so that uh, they can uh, indeed um, ensure that the child with the support needs can uh, remain uh, uh, in society and in the family. ESPD, the European Network of Support Services for Persons with Disabilities, works since a long time on early childhood intervention. We have a permanent working group we have a very important ECI Agora project through which we hope to develop uh, early childhood uh, services in Central and Eastern Europe. We are working with the Alliance for Investing in Children and also work with the Commission on early childhood education uh, and care uh, in that early childhood and education care group. All these elements are important and make clear that indeed early childhood intervention is an important topic and we will discuss it this morning. In the first panel, we have six testimonies from six different countries and we have also replies from different country desks from the European Commission. And they also will look at how early childhood uh, intervention and its requirements can become part of the European semester, yes or no. In a second panel, we will focus on policies and we have Madame uh, Libro with us, leading the Commission uh, Task Force on Early Childhood Education uh, and Care Group uh, there. We have also uh, Madame 
Tung Yogi, and I hope that that is pronounced more or less correct, who is uh, working in the Alliance for Investment in Children. We have uh, Irena Bertana uh, with us from uh, Families uh, Europe and uh, the policy officer of uh, ESPD, um, Thomas uh, Bignal. They will have a policy uh, debate and look at possible uh, recommendations for the semester process. The wrap-up will come from another policy officer of ESPD, uh, Timothy uh, Gillan. I wish you all an interesting morning and please come up with good, strong suggestions to be included in the uh, European semester uh, recommendations, making sure that a more inclusive society uh, and the inclusion of children with support needs becomes uh, a reality for many, many families across the European continent. And now I hand over to your moderator for this morning, uh, Sabrina Ferreira, uh, policy manager of ESPD. Sabrina, we're all yours. Thank you, Luke, and um, uh, welcome to everyone. It is my pleasure today to uh, moderate this session on a very important and crucial topic for ESPD, early childhood intervention. As Luke mentioned, we will have uh, two sessions. In the first one, um, we will uh, discuss about the key messages and the key issues at national level that concern early childhood intervention. And we will see how uh, EU policymakers can respond to the challenges and to, to the issues presented by our experts. And then we will move on with a session on EU policies. So without further uh, delay, I would like to open up this session. Uh, we have six country experts, and I would like to start with Albania. Um, before giving the floor to our country experts to Albania, I would like to clarify that indeed Albania um, is unfortunately not part of the European semester process. Uh, nonetheless, we uh, have conducted this research on early childhood intervention also with um, countries that are not part of the European Union and for which uh, the topic is still a very important one. So we are still looking forward also to hear what are the main messages from uh, Albania. Uh, Mirela, please uh, tell us what is your, uh, uh, your key uh, finding and your key message uh, in your country. Good morning. I uh, hope I, you can hear me. Yes, very well. Okay. So on behalf of Down Syndrome Albania, I would like to thank uh, ESPD for making part of this report. And thank you to all the participants today. I will be brief and tackle some of the main issues. Uh, the PowerPoint presentation actually has some additional, additional information, so I will just try to be short. <clears throat> Albania has ratified the UN, UNCRPD in 2012. The government started to implement and created new laws, uh, which has been in accordance with the um, convention, but in practice we have a lot of challenges. Uh, we don't have official data, the main problem because um, so we don't have a, a real number on how many children receive ECI. We don't have this number because uh, uh, there is a lot of problems. There is, um, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> so I will start again. Um, in an UNICEF report in 2017, this is the latest data we have, only 8% of the children with disability in Albania receive social services. So it's a social services, it means all types of social services. Uh, some of the challenges we have is the lack of bylaws and the small budget. Of course, the budget is always the main problem. The small budget allocated for social services. We have uh, very limited numbers of uh, ECIs and also <coughs> The most of them are largely uh, managed by NGO sector, by the private sector. We also know ha we don't have costing or standards or a model so we can understand these uh, ECIs by whom are provided is the staff qualified, etc. We also have lack of awareness and we have a failing uh, refer referral system. So to be short and uh, come back to the focus of the webinar, we are not a member of you yet, but uh, we just want to say um, we would like to request so that you have to prioritize the uh, funds for social, for direct social services. A good practice is the latest uh, call of EPA on social services. 
is very uh, good practice. And uh, we would like to help um, EU help in increasing the accountability of um, citizens to their state. And as I said, to prioritize the um, social services in their policy making, in the funds, and etc. Thank you. That's all from us. Okay. Thank you, Mirela. Um, if you can please uh, stop sharing yes. the screen. I and, hope um, do it. Perfect. So, uh, no real data and uh, important message for the EU, prioritize funds for social services. Um, I take the opportunity to inform you that this presentation uh, will be shared afterwards, will be available on the ESPD website, and uh, all the messages that are shared today are also included in uh, our uh, report, which will be launched as well after the webinar. So I will give the floor immediately to Bulgaria. Um, we have a representative from Karin Dom, uh, Mrs. Magdalena Tsoneva. Uh, Magdalena, can you hear us? And your microphone is muted, so. Let's see if we can hear Magdalena. Mm, nope. Okay, so uh, Magdalena, I will give you a couple of minutes maybe to uh, fix your headset and uh, your audio system. And in the meantime, uh, we'll move maybe to first to Finland. Um, we have a representative from KVPS, the Finnish Foundation for Persons with an Intellectual um, Disability. Uh, Kirsi, are you there? Uh, yes, hello, Sabrina. Hello, Kirsi. Please. I tried to check whether I could Here's whether I could share my screen, but it's no, 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 no. Just a second. I'm sure. No. Would you like me to share the screen? Yes, please. If you can do it, it would be easier. All for right. Me. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for that, Sabrina. It's just the two slides, so, <laughs> so no problem. So hello all, good morning. Uh, uh, just a few words uh, about early intervention and intervention in Finland. We prepared short uh, counter report to the European semester. Uh, Sabrina will uh, sh uh, show us a uh, next slide, please. Uh, yes. Uh, so just a few words about the, the state of play of early intervention in Finland. Early intervention lies in responsibility of municipalities and healthcare in, in Finland. Uh, it's not, a, let's say, subjective right uh, to a family. So it's in legislation, in disability legislation, it's mentioned that families can apply for it, but it's up to the municipalities' resources if they get it. So, so this is, let's say, one of the big, uh, big problems that uh, in these times when the resources, as we know, are quite limited, there is very, uh, it varies a lot the access of the families to the early intervention. Uh, families are, this leads, of course, to a situation that families are in, in different position in different areas of Finland, and also in equality or in quality of, of, the, of the early intervention as the there is large variety of, of providers providers here. It's not like a, it's not a, any any concept set. Let's say uh, there is no national practice uh, or principles which would guarantee sufficient and good quality early intervention for all. This is, uh, I think, the head headline of, of our counter report. It would help the situation a lot if this kind of guidelines or principles would be set either by legislation or in some other finding docu documents from the, from the national uh, players, let's say. Of course, now we are in the, again, we are, it, it's an ongoing story for, for decades, but we are in the middle of changing the situation from the municipalities to the, to the, more, to the areas. So we don't exactly know how the situation will change, but it's um, because there is this um, problem with the, with the resources, of course, and so, so we don't see that it would help the situation as such, the changing of the structure. Um, 
especially well, we have been we have this kind of uh, national unofficial uh, let's say committee or network network on early intervention we are a part of it and uh, with the members we have members of that network we have discussed that especially difficult the situation is uh, for the if the child is having a rare diagnosis let's say that, that there is not so much knowledge about the diagnosis and not so much uh, peer support and so on for the families so so these families are in especially vulnerable position and of course as, as the situation is a bit spread out uh, the doctors and nurses would need training and tools we know that this is very sensitive area it needs a lot of special uh, knowledge um, from the from, for the doctors and so on so and other parts which provided so so this kind of tra training and would would help a lot okay you can put a next slide the other other slide sabrina uh, so few solutions be identified together with um, other members of the network and and when we were analyzing the situation, as I already said, national guidelines, how to give early intervention, good quality uh, early intervention, that would be needed. And of course, in our perspective, it's not, uh, it, would, it would not be so difficult <laughs> task to do, let's say. There is good uh, international examples of, of good guidelines. There is a lot of knowledge, research made, also practice what works, what doesn't. So to collect, these kind of guidelines would help a lot. Um, collaboration between different organizations, as I already mentioned, there is a lot of uh, different organizations providing it, a lot of NGOs, then also hospitals and so on. So there should be better coordination between these organizations um, and the roles of, let's say, roles of different organizations should be set up in a more clear way so that also families would know better uh, what to ask from where and what, it, what are their rights and, and so on. Uh, then comprehensive and family oriented uh, process. Uh, person with disability, family and the whole circle of support should be involved. Uh, of course, these guidelines would help also to create this kind of, uh, this kind of process. Uh, training of staff, already mentioned, this would be a support solution. Uh, developing and concepting good practices. As I said, there is good practices and a lot of big, and the problem is really the big variety between different areas and so on. So also in Finland, in some areas, we already have good practices developed. Those should be concepted and scaled up. Uh, one important thing is that the, the importance and the meaning, of, importance, let's say, of, of early um, intervention should be recognized. Uh, it's not as recognized as it, as it should be. Also, it's, uh, it's um, in, in law, it's rather weak the legislation in terms of, as I said, rather weak the legislation regarding the uh, early intervention or if it would be re recognized, how important it is. Ike Luke said in, her, in his very good um, introduction, uh, it's really a key to uh, inclusion and to society, how the family feels that, that how how is the family member with disability or support needs, uh, how it's and how family is starting to support him or her in, in his life. It's really at the key concept of key to the whole inclusion and the community and the living in community as citizen. So it should be recognized the meaning of it in in more wide way. So I think that's the my main message from from Finland. Thanks, Sabrina. All right. Thank you, Kirsi. Uh, very important messages indeed. Um, I see that our colleague from Bulgaria now reconnected, reconnected also uh, with the video camera on. Uh, Magdalena? No, I hope you can hear me. Very well, yes. Thank you. Okay. I had to switch to my phone again. Sorry. Uh, so I'm Magdalena Tsoniva. I work at Karin Dawn Foundation, which is one of the first organizations in our country to provide uh, ECI services. So we work on advocacy for ECI and development of a national ECI system. And also our government adopted a new law for social services uh, on 1st of July uh, 2020 after a six month uh, delay. 
uh, now a regulation for the implementation of the law of social services uh, have to be drafted. Uh, the law provides the development of a national map for social services, uh, which will analyze the service uh, needs of individual communities and services need to be planned uh, and uh, based uh, and also uh, funded uh, based on the demand and uh, the real needs of the communities. Um, so it is important to include the early intervention service on the, uh, in the national map on social services so that uh, services are affordable and accessible uh, throughout the country and all children and families who need them can uh, have uh, services. Although uh, our social ministry takes the lead in uh, the provision of ECI services, all the three sectors, uh, social, health and educational, they uh, have their uh, role and it is important that they cooperate and uh, their uh, roles and commitments are uh, clearly defined uh, in uh, this process so that we have a um, comprehensive uh, national ECI system. Also, the regulation needs to ensure smooth and clear process of identification and referral to ECI services for children who are not only with disabilities but also children with developmental delays and children at risk um, because uh, early, uh, early start is really important so, uh, and we don't uh, miss children uh, and we uh, don't let children left behind and we start really early. Also, we need unified methodology because currently uh, the ECI services have uh, different quality and different uh, uh, provision, different standards for their provision, uh, so we need uh, Unified methodologic, uh, methodology, which is based on good practices of family-centered care and uh, um, working in natural environments as, uh, as much as possible. Uh, there is a need for easy services quality standards that will ensure uh, high quality across uh, all service providers uh, throughout the country and also adequate and sufficient financial standard for those services so that the workforce um, is uh, well-trained, qualified, and, uh, and retaining services. Uh, and uh, uh, current moment, uh, many NGOs in our country, which are involved in ECI services, have uh, joined their forces in the direction of advocacy. And uh, we make efforts to work together with the government to uh, build a national ECI system. This is from me, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Magdalena. Uh, important developments happening in Bulgaria. Uh, we have a representative from the European Commission from the Bulgarian Country Desk. Uh, Mrs. Rangelov, would you like to uh, give your inputs on, uh, on the messages that were just shared? Yes, hello, Sabrina. Uh, indeed, uh, I'm working in the desk of Bulgaria, Romania, in European Commission DG Employment. And basically, we generally agree with the support uh, provided by NGOs to the Ministry of uh, Social Affairs to develop, first of all, the law of social services, which was uh, for us uh, a really important milestone, generalizing the uh, individual assessment and also delivering specialized services to people that before were not necessarily included in the list of uh, delivery. And uh, also for us, much more important is to ensure the motivation of service providers to stay uh, in the delivery of services. This is basically important for children because uh, we know that uh, if children are not sufficiently motivated by the staff taking part in the delivery of the service, we have uh, then some motivational programs also within families. And uh, the third approach that for us is extremely important, and I support the representative that talked just before, it's really this kind of family approach towards the delivery of the early childhood intervention. Uh, in Bulgaria, we can say today that uh, the institutionalization process for children is advancing. It's not yet finalized, but still important steps were done during the last years. What is now really important is to have consolidation of the new model, because all reforms are extremely fragile, and we need to ensure that especially for children and children from zero to three, the reforms are consolidated and the delivery of new or integrated child care services is quite important. Uh, last point from our side, we from the Commission see in the future one important challenge, which is uh, really uh, what was also mentioned, is the uh, financing and the sustainable financing. For now, for the last few years, many, many projects were done with European funds, mainly the social uh, European Social Fund, but also the Regional Development Fund. 
And for the keeping the sustainability of those investments, the national budget needs to take really a stake in the future. And uh, we need to ensure that this sustainable funding is not only centrally managed, but also to have the assessment of the needs on the, ter on the territory. We know that between the urban and rural areas, there is a lot of diversity. Mainly the early childhood services are delivered in cities and especially in big cities, whereas the needs are across the territory. So I believe that this is, let's say, the next challenge that we need to address is this kind of availability of services for children in a very early age across the territory. And in a very last moment, uh, what was mentioned, the quality of services. In the past already, there was a preliminary assessment of the services delivered to, to children. So we don't start there from zero, but there is an important need to have a very big consensus on what is a quality service delivered to children and how in the long term this can be ensured. So I think that this uh, four or five elements needs to be considered and we are now in discussion with the authorities in Bulgaria, especially in the new programming of the European funds to achieve this kind of change in scope. So basically address new challenges and to keep the sustainability of the general funding at the national level. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rangelov, and very good to hear that uh, your unit is on top of uh, very important and key developments uh, in Bulgaria. We, we will be uh, in touch with you also um, later on. Um, let's move now to Greece. Um, we have a representative from Amimoni, uh, Agapi Papadaki, and uh, after the, uh, the intervention of Agapi, we will, uh, I will uh, right after um, give the floor to the country desk from the European Commission on Greece. So, George, Agapi, you, uh, you can start. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, just let me share the screen correctly. Here you are. So good morning, dear participants. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you, ESPD, for inviting, uh, inviting us on this uh, webinar of great importance for ECI service providers and the families of children with disabilities in Greece. Uh, Amimon is a Panhellenic Association of Parents of MDVI people and is offering home visiting ECI services to children zero to six and their families with visual impairments since 2004. So although ECI services exist today in Greece, the families with children with disabilities and the service providers are facing important challenges related to the lack of specific uh, regulating legislative framework. Uh, this leads to unsupported and unprotected vulnerable population, mainly children with disabilities under three and their families, and the lack of systematic financial support affecting seriously the sustainability of services. Sorry. Uh, mainly based on private, who are mainly uh, based on private funding and uh, donors. And of course, the provision of services by, and, uh, and of course, the, the other uh, challenge that we face is that the provision of services is mainly offered by private institutions and NGO who are not centrally regulated. Thus, implementing diverse processes and qualitative standards. Families are therefore exposed to segmented provision of services and the developmental opportunity of zero to three years is often lost. Uh, Luke has uh, highlighted the importance of this uh, very important part. part. Uh, there is also a lack of clear mapping of the services available and not fam all families in need are uh, catered on time. Uh, we, big, uh, we very briefly highlighting the main issues to be tackled uh, by the authorities in Greece, we would suggest to develop uh, and specify the national ECI monitoring and implementation framework towards a more family centered holistic, interdisciplinary and individualized approach for children with disabilities. Uh, it is proven that home visiting programs are also very important in this uh, field and very um, effective. To adopt common quality standards and procedures, ensuring transparency and control, and safe and safe provision of services for the parent for the families and provide certified education for ECI professionals and last but not least ensure sustainable funding for ECI services. Uh, EU may work as a catalyst uh, in this effort through its mechanism networking and know-how transfer may be facilitated. 
developing of a platform of structured dialogue, ensuring involvement of all stakeholders, including families, service providers, experts, and policymakers. And of course, specified targeted financial instruments for assisting the development and implementation of VCI national framework. I would like here to, not, to, to highlight that very often ECI services are confused uh, with e e uh, early education uh, services, which is a broader uh, umbrella of uh, social uh, care, and which is uh, very important to distinguish and uh, really um, focus and target. So, uh, Amimoni, of course, is available to anyone who would like to, to assist uh, every effort towards uh, scaling up of the existing uh, good practices that we provide since 15 years, more than 15 years now. And uh, we would like to thank you very much for this. Uh, and congratulations for this, um, for this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Agathe. Uh, can I ask you to stop sharing the screen? Yes. Great, so we can see everyone again. Uh, I will give immediately the floor to um, the representative from the country desk of the European Commission, uh, country desk from Greece, Mr. Uh, George uh, Kirmizidis. Uh, apologies for the <laughs> pronunciation. <laughs> Please. <clears throat> was quite accurate, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me for, uh, to this event. It's uh, really an eye-opening experience uh, for me as uh, uh, I have recently uh, joined this, uh, this field. Um, I would uh, like to uh, highlight here um, the importance of the integrated um, approach that uh, we need to pay attention in order to be able to cover uh, as a whole the needs of uh, the children in, uh, in, this, uh, in this difficult um, and challenging situation. And uh, as my colleague said from the Bulgarian desk earlier on, uh, the same in Greece, there has been a number of reforms taking place in Greece following the recent, uh, well, uh, protracted, I would call it rather, um, financial crisis that triggered a number of reforms at a national level with the assistance of the European Union and in particular with uh, a number of new developments uh, being supported by the European Social Fund. Indeed, it is true, as Mrs. Papadaki mentioned, that as early as 2008, if I remember correctly, um, there had been uh, an effort to strengthen the general um, uh, support for early uh, education and care for children in general in Greece. And in fact, in the last years, we have seen a, a, that there are much more positions available to the general population uh, to accommodate such needs. However, in the sensitive area of uh, children with disabilities, many more things need to be done. And uh, there are definitely unmet needs that um, uh, we are looking closer into. There is, in general, a reform regarding the disability um, as a whole, and in there we could see how we can further uh, address the specific needs of the target group we are talking about, so children zero to three. And um, uh, also with regards to the fragmentation of the service providers that was mentioned earlier on, um, we can um, mention here that there has been an overall development of the community centers in uh, Greece. So this is like a, a one-stop shop at a community level that can uh, utilize um, registries of the service providers at a local level. Either they are coming from the public sector or private organizations. And, uh, and this is ongoing work that can further, that can further be um, streamlined and improved. 
Yes, and uh, definitely there are uh, opportunities for further work uh, from the national authorities to which uh, the European Commission, given the uh, support and the guidance that we provide, can further elaborate. Uh, I, would, I would complete here my intervention. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, George. Uh, very important indeed that uh, uh, you participate to this debate and uh, also that uh, it's possible to uh, continue the cooperation and this connection uh, um, also with your unit. Mm -hmm. um, I'll switch now from Greece to Poland. Um, our representative from Poland uh, uh, comes from the Ezra organization, Mrs. Uh, Donska Oloszko, and apologies for the pronunciation. Okay. <laughs> Um, please, we are very uh, much looking forward to hear your message from Poland. Thank you, Sabrina. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Very good, yes. Yeah, okay. I try to, to show my presentation. Is it visible? It I is. Think? Yes. Okay, so we'll try to be short. What is the situation in Poland uh, right now as concerns early childhood intervention? We do not have a system, a systemic prevention and uh, support uh, uh, also of children at risk, age 07. Uh, but I hope we are on the way, which I try to explain you uh, later on. What is uh, going now in Poland? Uh, let, me, let me see, show you another slide. We don't have a common legislation. The main, um, uh, the main sector who is taking care of uh, disabled uh, children and children at risk is uh, uh, Minister of Education, very involved right now in uh, um, uh, dialogue between uh, other sectors, means Minister of Health and the Ministry of uh, uh, Social Policy. Uh, we have only the legislation in this sector. We have undeveloped social services. Early detection in the health sector is not correlated with uh, other uh, sectors. So it means that we have lots of different uh, services and service providers and institutions, but parents are lost in the, in the system and they really don't know how to move around. And also what is very important, we have a shortage of teachers and specialists working in kindergartens, but not only, just working in the field of ECI. Uh, so, but uh, I would like to say that the Agora project, which I was, uh, or I am still a coordinator in our country of this project, uh, uh, made a great input and we started a dialogue very soon if you see uh, as you see on the slide we will have the international conference uh, building a cross-sectoral uh, coalition really for early child development and family support uh, and uh, with the representative uh, with all the politicians and decisions who, who have any, uh, any influence for the, uh, for the systemic solutions and also with the presentation and participation of the member of European Commission. And this is really the first step. I, I, I feel that this is historical moment for our country, try really to coordinate all the system, to allocate all the resources we have properly uh, so it will be very, very important step encouraged by the project uh, uh, of ESPD. Uh, as concerns main messages and recommendation, so I hope that the, after this conference and this the first step uh, and first dialogue, the main issue for us will be the implementation and really how to do it. Uh, uh, so, so to do the first step and really it, uh, it will be a great effort for all players. Then also uh, to promote the family center model because we have to say that we are uh, rather in the medical approach than in this ecological so social approach. So to move 
uh, to the to 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 this uh, model of family-centered uh, ECI services is a very important one, especially that I think that we already recognize that it is a kind kind of key key issue for inclusion. Uh, and the Minister of Education is working a lot or was working in the last two years to implement some reforms and to make our educational system more inclusive. So we recognize already that this early intervention focused on the, uh, on the social model is the, is the kind of basement of fundament for this uh, uh, inclusive system. So uh, the challenge for us is to promote this recent knowledge, the, this ecological social approach to ECI services, and to invest resources in every exchange programs just to raise the knowledge of all our specialists who are already uh, working in ECI services, but also for the new, uh, for just for students, uh, to, to move from medical model to the ecological one. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, um, Mrs. Uh, um, uh, sorry for the pronunciation. Can you please stop sharing the screen? So yeah. give the floor to uh, the representative from uh, Slovakia and right after to the representative of the European Commission. So Vlado. Hello everyone. So, yeah, let me. So, I have prepared very uh, short information about Slovakia. I think the main key message we can conclude as a title of our, my presentation uh, the, there is a necessity to move from partial solutions to systematic change in Slovakia, in ECI especially. Um, Slovakia is still known as a country with a high degree of institutionalized citizens with disability uh, that includes also children. Uh, this is an example of uh, one castle where ch children or clients are placed. And so there are, I summarize three key challenges what has to be uh, changed in Slovakia. Uh, there is low availability of early international services for families with disadvantaged children. Both European Commission and UN Committee uh, stated this problem for Slovakia uh, a very, as a very specific recommendation on the last CRPD report. Uh, there is a need of uh, significant lack of early intervention, early diagnosis services uh, in Slovakia. So the second key challenge is that there is still existing so so-called all uh, system. Uh, also referred as a segregation or, or institutional care or medical model. Uh, and uh, there are just a few new, um, but still isolated islands of positive deviation uh, of services based on the rights approach or, or the holistic approach. Uh, there is, um, we have still a lot of uh, boarding schools, special schools, it's more than 450 with uh, almost 35,000 children living there uh, as a special school system existing in Slovakia. And there is different quality of content of early interventions and in social services. Uh, some of the public providers have set up ACI uh, nearby the large capacity institutions. And you can see in the pictures on, in the, on this slide. And the several AC providers do not meet the content criteria for the ECI, what is family-based home support or the main uh, social inclusion goal. So uh, the basic recommendation for, for Slovakia is to create an integrated interdepartmental ACI system uh, because there is still fragmented among at least three ministries, educational, social resort and uh, healthcare. Um, and coordinated efforts of the, at, le, at least these three sectors has to be improved by also by European semester or by, by uh, funds coming to Slovakia next uh, programming period. 
uh, the improved accessibility and availability of the CI services across the country. This is the second main goal and ensure a smooth transition of children with disabilities be between support system, mostly the transitions from ECI to school system. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Vlado. Um, indeed, this uh, integration across ministries comes uh, back and forth uh, as a key uh, message from all countries. Um, let's hear now from uh, the representative from the country desk of both Poland and Slovakia in the European Commission, um, Václav Sterba. Uh, um, do you have any feedback to give us, Václav? Yes. Yes, indeed, and uh, bringing uh, the experts together. I think it's a very valuable input uh, for our analytical work. And indeed, uh, my name is Václav uh, Šterba. I represent today the unit um, in DG Employment, which, which deals with Czech Republic, Poland, and Slovakia. Um, when I say Czech Republic, Poland, and Slovakia, I, uh, I proceed by alphabetical order, by saying Czech Republic first. It's, it has nothing to do with me being Czech. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and today, indeed, uh, I'm here to contribute uh, uh, with uh, what we do as expertise on, on Slovakia and, and Poland. Uh, I'll start with, uh, with Slovakia first. I've, my, I've taken my notes first on Slovakia. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, we have already addressed the, the, the issue in the country report in the very same way as, as Mr. Mr. Matej just mentioned it. And that's also because in our country report, we actually base ourselves. Uh, ourselves on the analysis um, of the Association of Providers of Early Intervention in, in Slovakia. So, um, so basically the, the compliment goes, goes back, to, back to you, Mr. Matej, and uh, appreciation for, uh, for all the work and, uh, and data gathering that you've you done. Uh, uh, um, um, I mean, th th there is, uh, there is a number of touches uh, uh, to this issue. There is the general lack of, of service and general lack of, of, of coverage of, of all the, uh, of, of the children who would need support. Uh, in Slovakia, there is also a specific aspect uh, linked to this, which links to, to, the, to the Roma children, um, uh, where in fact there is now uh, hanging in the air uh, an infringement process against Slovakia which links to discrimination of Roma pupils in education. Because in the nutshell, uh, a large majority of Roma pupils, when they start the primary school, they are immediately labeled as, uh, as mental disabled and put in the special school. Now, the process which, which leads to this uh, is, is, is questionable, and that's what the infringement is about. But even if we accept that a certain uh, amount of the, of the, of the children who uh, are seven, seven years old, are, um, are recognized as, as mentally disabled or lightly mentally disabled, then the question comes, what has happened with these children in the age, you know, between zero and seven? And what's been the intervention there? And uh, I think unless there are credible answers from Slovak authorities or credible commitment from Slovak authorities to, uh, uh, to deal with this, um, we won't be able to close the infringement process. So that's, uh, that's, I think, one important element in, uh, uh, that fits in the story. Uh, I think you rightly pointed out uh, the fragmentation between the, uh, uh, the three various ministries. Uh, from, from, uh, what, from our knowledge of the ground, I would also maybe add fragmentation between the different levels of governance, where the competence is with municipalities and also the potential to create uh, this sort of service could also be with the regional level. But uh, at the end of the day, municipalities don't have the budgets to do it. And uh, uh, there is basically no link between the municipal plans of social services with the national strategy of our social services. So there is a broader governance issue that's not just horizontal between the various ministries, but also between the levels of governance, national, uh, uh, local, and regional. And uh, so the question now is, what can we do about that? Uh, apart from writing it uh, about it in the country report. Uh, I personally see, see, see two, uh, um, uh, two battlefields where we can take this forward. Uh, one is in the context of preparing the, the next programming period for the EU funds, 
the countries have to fulfill the so-called enabling conditions. So basically a set of basic governance rules that are observed in the country so that the EU funds can start flowing. And uh, there is also an uh, enabling condition requiring strategic policy framework on health. And part of this uh, enabling condition is a requirement that there is a uh, ethereal mapping of health and long-term care needs in the country. And also there, there is a framework for measures. And uh, uh, in the Slovak Geodesk, we take this very seriously and consider uh, not, uh, I mean, both also uh, mental health care, but also uh, the early child intervention as, as a thing that needs to be addressed through enabling condition. So we will uh, seek reassurance by Slovak authorities that they have a strategic policy framework that first maps the needs and second, uh, there's a system of, of addressing the needs. And uh, only then, once, once we are convinced, we can tick off this enabling condition as, as, as fulfilled. And second, uh, there is now uh, a lot of talk about uh, possible reforms under the uh, recovery and uh, resilient fund that has been proposed recently by the Commission. Um, and in Slovakia, I think we are in the direction of, uh, of, of reforming the delivery of social services, including through reform of, uh, of municipal governance, allowing uh, municipalities to cluster so they can, they can, they can deliver services uh, where a small municipality of 500 citizens, of course, cannot establish a new social service like virtual intervention. If there are 20 municipalities that cluster and establish the service for, for the area of those 20 municipalities, that could work out. And uh, we very much want to work hard in this direction with the Slovak government uh, to bring about this sort of, this sort of reform. Um, if, if you have, uh, Mr. Matej, any observations on, 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 on these governance aspects, it would uh, uh, be welcome either in the meeting or in, 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 in the follow-up uh, uh, to this. And uh, as regards Poland, I also very much appreciate the, uh, 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 the input uh, uh, by the expert. And uh, I think what's, what, 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 what you did very well was to differentiate between the, the childcare facilities and, and childcare services, because these are two different ball games. And in the European Commission, sometimes we tend to, to, to narrow the scope of, of the problem to existence of childcare facilities. And we have all those targets and European averages that we want to meet and, uh, and so on. But um, so we just look at, at the possibility of parents to put kindred children in formal care so they can go to work. And okay, from the labor market point of view, this is a valid point, but the world is more, much broader than that. And um, uh, I think you clearly recognize this in the analysis that we need to look at, at the issue of childcare services uh, being provided in general, whether uh, uh, to parents uh, or stay at home parents with their children uh, or to kindergarten nurses, uh, uh, kindergarten nurses and teachers uh, so that also they are able to detect uh, uh, possible disabilities and, and deal with them uh, as of, as of uh, early age. So this is, this is an angle that we have not covered in our country report so far. And there your analysis comes, uh, comes, I think, at a good point in time and it's extremely useful. And a lot of things that, which I mentioned in responding to Slovak case, of course, apply to, uh, uh, to Poland as well. Um, and maybe a final point in your, uh, in your report, you mentioned uh, the Polish for Life program. Um, uh, with the with, uh, with note that it does not seem to have delivered uh, much of results so far. But can I just ask you whether this, uh, the program for life uh, aims at coordination between the various levels of administrations to, um, uh, to get the electoral intervention going, or does it actually also aim to, to create new services? Uh, Václav, sorry to interrupt. Um, I think ESPD is happy to facilitate this dialogue and, ex and exchange uh, in a separate <laughs> on a separate okay. occasion or exchange because we are quite short of time. 
And yes. I think this I appreciate a follow up uh, after the meeting on this. That'd be great. Thank you. Answers require, I think, a bit of uh, a bit of time to be uh, discussed in depth. So, but we are happy to facilitate dialogue between uh, uh, country experts and also country desks in the European Commission. That's why we are organizing this webinar. And uh, who knows, we we may organize an, uh, a similar dialogue also in the in the near future. Um, so with this, I think you had concluded your uh, uh, inputs. So I will switch then to the last um, uh, inputs from a country, Croatia. Uh, for Croatia, we have uh, messages included in our uh, semester report. Uh, unfortunately, the country experts could not be uh, could not attend the webinar today. Uh, I'll briefly touch upon the main issues that were reported, uh, mainly concerning the, um, the lack of quality standards. This is something that has been repeated also for other countries and the lack of coordination between sectors. Also, good early childhood intervention systems. For Croatia, uh, we do have, however, uh, a country desk representative, Mr. Uh, Egbert Holthaus, is connected via the phone. Um, Herbert, can you hear us? Yes, for sure, Sabrina. Um, thanks for the invitation, dear participant, dear look. Very briefly, I think that the information you already provided in, in writing um, is uh, based on our country report on, the, on our assessment. A very clear description of the challenges and uh, you also see that uh, we've reflected uh, the, the need to uh, discuss uh, social benefits, uh, improve capacity, reduce poverty, look at long-term care services in Croatia as a central place in, in our assessment. Um, I think that uh, we also closely monitor uh, the Croatian strategies in place. Um, early childhood is regulated through the Social Welfare Act and uh, the National Strategy for Rights of Children, 1420 specifically supporting funeral uh, children. Um, I think that uh, we can also agree with the, um, the few issues you mentioned, Sabrina. More investment is needed. Uh, the quality aspects are important. Um, the availability is uh, different between different regions in, in Croatia. And overall, um, the, um, the size of the issues needs to be reflected uh, more including in the uh, EU uh, funding arrangements, which we are going to discuss now with an eye on the, on the future. What is very important, what looks at in the beginning, we have the challenges as out, set out in the country report, but with the crisis, these challenges in particular for funeral families are even bigger. So this is an issue. Finally, um, because by far and large, I can fully agree with the assessment uh, presented. I think we have to, if we have uh, a strategy uh, early childhood intervention. We also have to look at the broader picture on gender equality. In particular, Croatia has to do much better in that context. Uh, they are ranked 22nd uh, in the list of gender equality in the EU. EU. We have to look at work-life balance, um, the participation of, of women in the labor market in, uh, in Croatia is much less than in, e in the EU. Uh, we also see low paternity pickup and, uh, and parental leave. Uh, woman care uh, is much more presented than uh, the care for the elderly uh, by men. Um, um, we all are going to take these challenges serious. We have intense debate with the relevant ministries in Croatia. We also work with UNICEF and uh, with an eye on the 21-27 ESF and EIDF programming. We will step up uh, the dialogue. Um, we have our policy objective four in the context of the ESF plus we also have the child guarantee, as been mentioned, with a couple of players. Um, so we are ready to uh, improve together with the Ukrainian uh, authorities the situation on the ground, taking into account also the regional disparities and what Stanis also said, also looking not only at investment costs, but also how to take care of recurrent costs. But uh, once again, many thanks for the great initiative and we look uh, forward to, uh, to any follow-up given. Thank you very much, Sabrina. Thank you, uh, Mr. Raolthaus. Uh, very important indeed to also open this dialogue on Croatia, um, as well as, of course, for, um, for many other countries. So to conclude this uh, list of uh, interventions, we are uh, running a little bit late. So uh, 
but a very important uh, and central uh, um, coordination point for the European semester and especially for messages concerning uh, social issues is the uh, uh, semester unit on the social on employment and social aspects um, which uh, should have been represented by Mr. Katia Berti, who could not be here with us today. She had a last minute uh, uh, issue. Uh, however, her colleague um, Philippe Tanai readily stepped in. Um, and uh, yes, Philippe, thank you for joining at such a short notice. Um, I'm sure you would like to share maybe a few messages of what your unit does and how your unit can bring forward uh, the, the general uh, issues that have been discussed today on, uh, on early childhood intervention. Indeed. Uh, thank you so much, Sabrina, and thank you so much to all of the panelists that have had uh, their interventions. Indeed, I, uh, I have to say, I think it, this kind of exchange that's very direct, where we get the feedback from the country experts on the ground and uh, discussing with the uh, geographical desks working here on the semester is, is, is a model to be followed. So. Um, I, I've certainly learned a lot. Um, so what I can tell you um, from what my unit does, uh, so my unit coordinates uh, the semester process in terms of all employment and social issues. And uh, of course, early childhood intervention is a big part of that. So let me just briefly tell you about the current state of play um, and a little bit about the future. So. I mean, the, the semester as a starting point uh, takes really early childhood intervention as, as a core part of its efforts and uh, of its priorities, not only in terms of uh, ensuring that there are financial means, but also by promoting sound public policies uh, to, com to combat uh, social exclusion, to ensure quality, equality of opportunity, and to improve uh, upward social mobility. I think I don't even need to tell you uh, that, that early childhood intervention is already visible from um, Article 3 of the Treaty of the EU, uh, that it's part of the principles of the European Pillar of Social Rights, um, as is the, the more uh, specific disability pers uh, perspective, which is included in four or five uh, principles of the pillar. Now, in uh, 2018 and 2019, uh, in this European semester cycle, we had already a lot of country-specific recommendations that were relevant to the issues we're discussing today on topics such as uh, early childhood education and care, family income support, financial disincentives to accept paid work for single and second earners. So here's the gender perspective that Egbert was also mentioning and uh, on inclusive education and access to healthcare. And uh, in particular, we had more than half of EU member states uh, receiving either recommendation on access to early childhood education on care or having a direct reference in the recitals to it. Now, you might have noticed that I mentioned the 2018-2019 cycle, which is the one of uh, the previous year, uh, but uh, the one that happened this year with the 2020 recommendations uh, was slightly uh, different in nature and I think is also important to mention because it's mixed with the COVID-19 challenge that we all find ourselves in. And uh, there, a lot more focus was placed on the immediate impact of the pandemic, uh, in particular on CSRs that are relevant for children and their well-being. And here we saw, for example, uh, the uh, addition of a new topic such as uh, replacement of traditional classes with, with distance learning, which required a good internet connection and adequate equipment. Um, so we had CSRs on this distance learning because uh, this uh, provision we found to be problematic in several member states and um, we had it hence mentioned in four recommendations in particular to uh, the Czech Republic, Spain, Italy and Romania while we had securing equal access to education um, in seven other member states uh, mentioned. So. In, in the CSRs. So we have 
a kind of also broader perspective to keep in mind. So the strengthening of social safety nets was again a big topic. Um, and uh, while there were no uh, CSRs explicitly mentioning children with disabilities, we had uh, quite a few references to disadvantaged groups, uh, which were widespread in legal texts, and we're referring also back uh, to both the country of Porta and uh, last year's recommendations. Um, so there, that covered a broad um, aspects of uh, education as well as access to healthcare and social services. Um, so just to mention a little bit about what the future holds, um, I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, there's, there's the Child Guarantee Initiative, uh, which will happen in 2021, which will represent really a further step ahead with regard to the uh, to EU's commitment towards children and in particular vulnerable children. Um, both in terms of their well-being and their future. We have the Recovery and Resilience Facility that uh, is coming up with a lot of funds um, that will be embedded in the new cycle of the European semester and hence also uh, linked with uh, promoting investments and reforms that will make member states' economies more resilient and prepared, uh, better prepared for the future of which, of course, early childhood intervention is a big part. And uh, that's, that's uh, I think, the, the main picture that I would like to paint in terms of where, where we are and where we're heading. Um, so to come back to your question on how the EU and European semester can support member states in developing their early childhood education, um, uh, interventions both legally and financially I think I think this is it um, so not only through um, legal uh, initiatives such as the child guarantee and having also funding available additional funding as well as the MFF like uh, additional funding such as the recovery and resilience facility but also I think through uh, continuing the analysis of the uh, member state policies through exchanges such as this one and um, through actually including the most relevant facts um, and holding them to light and uh, making sure that things move forward. So I'm really, I'm really happy to see that this discussion was very also um, facts based. I, I noted the eight, only 8% eight of children in, uh, with disabilities that receive uh, social service support in Albania. I, I note uh, also the differences in terms of segmentation in Greece um, and lack of certification and quality standards. I mean, I think all of those things are really key and I think you, uh, the participants here are also very, uh, very much key to ensure that we identify the right reforms and we push uh, for the right reforms uh, to also be implemented and funded. Thank you, Philip. Uh, important to know also that uh, we can count on your units to further uh, um, work on the topic, uh, which is a crucial one for ESPD. Uh, with your intervention, we uh, close the session here with the country experts. I apologize for the delay that we had, uh, but um, you surely noticed that there was a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of uh, interest from both parties, from the country experts, but also from the European Commission country desks, which is very important for us to, to work in a, uh, a co-produce, but also in a, in a, in a cooperation uh, spirit. And um, so thank you to, to all the panelists. Um, unfortunately, we have no, quest, no time for uh, questions and answers from the participants. So. Uh, I would like to invite those that have specific issues to use the chat box uh, on the side and uh, I saw that some discussions are going on and uh, hopefully you will find some answers there as well. So um, we move on to the second session of this webinar. Um, this session focuses on EU policies. So we discussed about the issues, about the main uh, problems at national level. And now we look for, uh, we, we, we look at the general context, the picture in which uh, early childhood intervention is operating. 
we will start with a, another very important uh, stakeholder for ESPD, that's uh, the Early Childhood in, uh, Education and Care you, uh, group in uh, Europe, uh, a group that is coordinated by, uh, chaired by Geraldine Libro from uh, the Early Childhood Education and Care uh, Unit in uh, the European Commission. Uh, Geraldine, uh, we look forward to hear a bit also what uh, your group can do to facilitate early childhood intervention. And thanks for joining um, the, the panel. Good morning. Yes, uh, indeed, I coordinate this, uh, this fantastic working group. Uh, I'm in DG Education and Culture, and we look specifically at the uh, care and education part of early childhood intervention. So this group includes uh, national representatives from 33 European countries and also eight European NGOs who bring their expertise, and one of them is EASPD. So the, the goal of the group is to reflect how to implement concretely the 2019 Council recommendation, which was adapt, adopted uh, on the topic of high quality early childhood education and care systems. And we started working almost two years ago. Now we're, uh, we, we are coming to the end of our work. And in November, we will be publishing amongst other things, a toolkit for inclusion in early childhood education and care which I will also call ECEC. -E so the, the work of the group is based on the recommendation, which I just mentioned. And this recommendation says, and I quote, participation in ECEC -E can be an effective instrument for achieving educational equity for children in disadvantaged situations, including those children with additional needs arising from disabilities. So this is really our starting point. Uh, the purpose of this inclusion toolkit that we will uh, publish is to provide ideas and examples to policymakers to improve the organization of the system in general at national level, but also at local, regional level, and also to staff in the creche and in the kindergartens to adopt more inclusive practices and attitudes. The whole idea is to make sure that uh, all the children, regardless of their individual situations or family situations have access to quality early childhood education and care. And for us, the word quality is essential. Uh, we don't just want to provide a place in a crèche so that parents can go to work. We want to provide quality education and care focused on children and their, and their uh, individual needs. So all our work is based on the evidence that this quality education and care is beneficial to all the children in general, but in particular to those who meet additional challenges and who can then receive uh, individual attention. So amongst the many points that we have included uh, in this toolkit, there are a few things I thought I could mention here uh, in particular. So there is a first part uh, based on the fact that we believe that children with disabilities can benefit from general inclusive strategies and attitudes. So for this, we are exploring global strategies, which can be adopted at national level to increase inclusion. And we also discuss how to measure inclusiveness. And as it has been mentioned before, there is a big lack of data and it is extremely difficult to measure inclusiveness. So we're trying to pinpoint the, the problem, the challenge, and possibly identify some solutions. Uh, we also present a range of policy measures which can be adopted for the benefit of all children and families. Uh, for instance, we look, we look at integrated systems, which for us means um, systems whereby one ministry looks after the whole age range in terms of education, not, for instance, a ministry for social affairs and a ministry for education. So we, we look at how that benefits families and how it facilitates inclusion. Uh, and we look at the other policy measures, which include supporting early intervention, of course, but also training of staff who look after the children. We also look at inclusive practices, for instance, in terms of working with families, facilitating transitions between different settings, for instance, from the crèche to the kindergarten and then on to primary school. Um, and for instance, I would quote another interesting example, which is based on an Erasmus Press project, uh, Intesis project. It looks at the benefits of 
integrated work. And here it's all about bringing together the early childhood education and care services with other services which serve families and very young children, for instance, the health and social services or the schools, with the idea that if they all work together, uh, we have a more inclusive service for the children and their families. And beside this uh, general approach that we have in the toolkit, we also have a section dedicated to children with disabilities with some examples related to the care and education of these children. It starts by summarizing research findings in the field as we try to always base our work on research findings and practices which have proved to be successful. Um, it recalls the recommendations made by the European Agency for Special Needs and Inclusive Education, which has done an extensive project on uh, inclusion of children with disabilities in early childhood education. Uh, and this chapter also offers examples from national systems in some countries which are trying to achieve more inclusion in ECEC and which have specific approaches for uh, children with disabilities. And finally, we provide examples of local practices, professional practices, and some links to resources. So this publication, this toolkit for inclusion, should be published in um, November. And of course, we will uh, pass on the information through EASPD, hoping that it can inspire practitioners, NGOs, national authorities, local authorities, and so on, to adopt new practices. Perfect. Thank you, Geraldine. And of course, it will be our pleasure to further share these outputs also with our contacts and uh, with all the stakeholders we and the service providers that we are in touch with. Um, I quickly move to uh, um, another important uh, ally of the ESPD, that's the, um, the Alliance for Investing in Children, another um, coalition of which ESPD is part. Uh, the Alliance is represented by Reka Tunyoji. Uh, Reka, please, what is your message to this uh, event? Good morning, good morning. And uh, many thanks to you, uh, ESPD, for this important debate today. Uh, so I work at Eurochild, which is the European Network of Children's Rights Organizations, and I, we work closely with the ASPD, COFAS, and other European networks committed to tackling child poverty in the EU Alliance for Investing in Children. Um, I'm going to share my screen quickly. Um, yep. Yeah. So, uh, just to say that the topic is very relevant for Eurochild's work as well, and then I'll speak about the key recommendations that we have as the EU Alliance, because we also work on the semester and on early childhood, um, and that we're in the process of setting up an international campaign on early childhood development together with the International Step-by-Step -Step Association, Public Health Alliance, and the Roma Education Fund. Um, and so, indeed, we talk about ECD, your early childhood development, inspired by um, the nurturing care framework developed and promoted by the uh, World Health Organization, UNICEF, and the World Bank, uh, which is uh, addressing five important components around good health, adequate nutrition, responsive caregiving, early learning, and security and safety. Um, so there are a number of opportunities uh, that uh, were mentioned earlier today and will be mentioned also after me. And I was asked to focus in particular on the child guarantee. Uh, just to say that the EU is also working on a comprehensive strategy on the rights of the child, uh, also coming out early next year, which will be a real opportunity to promote children's rights, including children in vulnerable situations across uh, the different policy areas. So. Um, a few words about the EU Alliance. It, is, um, it brings together over 20 European networks sharing a commitment to end child poverty and promote children's well-being across Europe. And since 2014, we have been advocating for more ambitious EU action and also the national implementation of the 2013 European Commission recommendation on investing in children, breaking the cycle of disadvantage which was a very helpful policy instrument in terms of its scope, giving also a lot of attention to early childhood um, and looking at three important axes, uh, access to resources in the family, so income, 
looking at access to high quality services from the child's perspective, including early childhood uh, education and care, and children's participation in decision making and in culture and leisure. So at the EU Alliance, we have been advocating for this scope to be uh, up updated and upgraded in a council recommendation on the child guarantee. So we've been uh, actually looking at how the uh, EU funding uh, through the next multi-annual financial framework can support it. We've been looking at ideas for structuring the child guarantee and we've also recently um, had some reactions to the COVID crisis. Now in particular, and this is, I have to emphasize, this is the view of the EU Alliance. So um, for the moment, there is a public consultation open in reaction to the roadmap on the child guarantee, which has been very recently published and will close in a month's time by the European Commission. But this is something we developed months ago in the EU Alliance, looking at how we would structure a child guarantee proposal. Um, something that is actually asking member states to put in place comprehensive strategies on uh, prevention and addressing, so tackling child poverty and social exclusion, being guided by child rights approach and children's best interest and balancing both universal and targeted approaches, whilst keeping the three pillar approach of the um, uh, investing in children recommendation, but encouraging that the member states use different EU financial sources to support structural reforms. And what is particularly welcome is that there, like, there is likely to be a percentage earmarked from the European Social Fund Plus in the next seven years for uh, addressing child poverty. Um, what this could, how this could be then monitored is definitely through the European semester, uh, given the regularity and the policy focus and the important social scoreboard that has been created. So very um, good to hear colleagues from the European Commission that this, is, um, this continues to be a priority area. Uh, the pillar of social rights, which is definitely a hook as the principle linking child poverty and early childhood, principle 11, is a very important entry point and that will remain relevant but also looking at how the sustainable development goals for the next 10 years uh, can be used also in the European Union context to ensure that there are targets set, that there is commitment at EU and at national level for um, tackling child poverty and for investing in children across the board and paying particular attention to children in need. So I will just close there and thank you very much for having us here. Thank you, Reka, and uh, um, thank you also for the work of the group, uh, which is indeed key to uh, ensure that uh, the, the rights of children and uh, the support services uh, required for children and their families are uh, well taken in, on board uh, in uh, EU policies. Um, a very interesting debate that has been developed, uh, I think now in the, uh, I saw now in the, in the chat, concerns um, the role of families and we are lucky to have here a representative from the organization uh, Families Europe. So Irene, um, how do you see the role of families? How should families be involved in the development of early childhood intervention services? Hello, hello Sabrina. Thanks uh, for this question and for organizing this uh, webinar. Um, yes, I represent COFASE Families Europe, which is a partner of the SPD and also of the Alliance of Investing in Children. And now coming to your question, well, uh, involving parents in ECI requires a combination of community-based, child-centered and family-friendly approaches. Parents and family carers are the first teachers of their children, so the purpose of early intervention should be to enhance the capacity of the family to facilitate their child development. Professionals should strengthen families by helping them secure needed support and resources while providing individualized and flexible help. Parents should be equal partners in ECI and at the heart of the discussion in the decision making about their child in the development and implementation of the ECI plans. And then the plan must include procedures to address also the family needs, close to the child needs. So the parents should be enabled to play the role with a two-generation approach that takes into account that parents may need socioeconomic help to take care of their children. 
with a multidisciplinary and holistic approach. Then each family is different, so it's imperative to consider uh, the ECI services to, with respect to the diverse family backgrounds. So to promote the parents' involvement, partitioners need to respect, recognize, and respond to the diversity of the family needs and interests. Identifying family needs, values, belief, interests, concerns, and resources might help to establish a shared understanding between the practitioners and the parents. And then the assessment instrument should be responsive to the child's linguistic and cultural background. Then last, proximity is key. So support should be available as close as possible to families, both at local and community levels. Services should be decentralized to facilitate better knowledge of the family's social environment and ensure the same quality of services despite geographical differences. And coming to just some very small and practical tips, uh, it is important to make useful resources available to parents with extensive, clear and precise information. Then provide training to parents, both online and in person, is important to help them understand or manage their child's specific needs or special education needs. Then another point is ask for feedback as to parents whether the information being shared is useful and how it can be improved, both in terms of content and format. And then frequent communication and also allowing the par the, for parents the time to process, hear, feel and think and respond. It's a key component and this should be done through different channels. It can be in person, to printed material and online. And then last but not least, encourage the peer networking among the parents is very important and also a positive relationship with the community. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Irene. Uh, very valuable contribution. And uh, of course, we uh, will make sure that we'll strengthen the cooperation also with your network uh, to embed and incorporate the views of families in, uh, in all our uh, outputs related to early childhood intervention. So to conclude this panel, um, we thought it was important uh, or we could not miss, let's say, the discussion about the next EU budget. Um, a lot is going on. And as at ESPD, we are uh, doing extensive work in analyzing the frameworks, uh, the funding streams and uh, working uh, with the relevant stakeholders in the EU institutions. Uh, now, my colleague Thomas is uh, the person in the office that um, has, uh, has, has been monitoring the, the EU budget post-2020. Uh, but um, yeah, I'll still want to give him a floor for a couple of minutes and uh, more information, of course, is available also on uh, the ESPD website and on upcoming events uh, that we'll organize on the topic. Thomas. Thank you, Sabrina, for giving me a few minutes on this. Um, so uh, effectively, uh, I will talk to you about, about the EU fund, the EU budget and how it can support uh, ECI uh, across the continent. Um, right now, the European Union is still negotiating the recovery plan for Europe, uh, which includes both, let's say, the, the long-term financial framework, the usual seven-year uh, budget, which is expected to be approximately 1.1 billion euros. And on top of that, there will be uh, another, let's say, uh, block of funding called Next Generation EU, which is basically the EU's plan to repair and recover from the, from the uh, pandemic. Uh, there are many programs within these uh, these two, uh, the MFF and the Next Generation EU. Uh, here I've highlighted a few which can maybe make the biggest impact uh, within the European Union. There's the European Social Fund Plus, there's European Regional Development Fund, REACT EU, and the Recovery and Resilience Facility. Um, the EU sets, and I think it was mentioned earlier, let's say that the, the general rules, the big picture, uh, but for uh, these four uh, programs, it's very much the national authorities who will decide uh, all regional authorities will decide how these programs will be used and they will be developing right now uh, or soon um, basically operational programs or plans on how they wish to spend this money. Uh, of course they need to be uh, aligned to let's say the European semester and that's why the European semester is so important um, but it's important very important that the national service providers and federations um, contact their national authorities 
and make sure that their points, and especially in this case, uh, ECI, is included within the operational programs and the recovery within, within the plans to make sure that ECI can also benefit from this EU budget. And so we encourage very strongly our, our, our members and, and all involved to speak to their authorities um, as soon as possible to make sure that the ECI can benefit from the EU budget. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we will keep an eye on things and uh, you're also welcome to approach ESPD in case you need further information on how early childhood intervention can be addressed by EU funds. So we are um, at disposal of, uh, uh, on these uh, topics. So I would like to close uh, this session um, on EU policies, uh, thanking again the speakers also for uh, trying to stick to the time allocated. Um, the, the, um, the presentations will be made available on the ESPD website. And uh, now I hand over for a final concluding remarks to my colleague, Timothy. And um, yeah, from my side, I'll say uh, goodbye and I thank you everyone. Timothy, please. Yes, thank you, Sabrina. I think I can speak on behalf of all participants in saying that it has been a very interesting webinar. And thank you to the speakers for your presentation, for your time and inputs. And thank you to all the participants for your involvement and dedication in the field. We saw that there was very active discussion on, in the chats and everyone is already asking to get in contact and work further, which is really a great sign for us. Um, now I have the difficult role to summarize and close this event. Uh, so I think the key messages we've seen repeating every country is um, we need to have a comprehensive ECI framework at national level. It can take different forms, different legislation, but we need to have clear regulation. Uh, we need also that different ministries from education, social uh, inclusion and health work together and have a common position, common vision on what ECI is to develop adequate funding. Um, we need, of course, trained staff and enough staff, uh, as we saw with uh, uh, Geraldine. So there's a shortage of staff across Europe. Um, and we need a promotion of family-centered models and to have the family uh, promoted and empowered to take care of the children. It was really good to hear from the commission officers uh, in the uh, different countries and uh, at DG Education, DG uh, Employment, that they are aware of many of these issues and we will make sure uh, to continue the collaboration we have with them and to put people in contact uh, in different countries uh, to support the development of ECI in these countries. Um, we'll continue also the work with, with the working group on early childhood education care and with the Alliance uh, for Investing in Children. Um, all these outputs will be shared with the participants because uh, as was said, it will be very useful to improve um, the, the uh, uh, validation of the sector and professionalization of the sector. Um, the upcoming child guarantee and as was mentioned by Tom, the next EU budget are two perfect opportunities to encourage the development of legal and financial frameworks that will support family-centered quality services that we all want and need. Um, we need to put children services as a priority for the next EU and national budgets. Um, to find out more about the situation in the country that were presented, uh, you can check out the report that the ESPD has developed where uh, we have clearly identified the issues and recommendations and ESPD recommendation for uh, the EU level. Uh, it's launched today, so all the participants will receive it uh, by mail in the coming hours. Um, once again, I would like to thank you all, and I look forward to working with you in the coming months to improve uh, children's services throughout Europe. Have a great day and uh, Keep in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.